What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Rodeo Wagon Podcast, brought to you by Cosmic Cowboys Productions and the Western Edge app. We're here with Keith Hall. You were the first person I did a podcast with. Yep, first one. I think that was, I, this is episode 23, 24, something like that. And that would have been, where were we at? Uh, Memphis. There in the, the original. Yeah, in the original. Yeah, that was, that was the OG wagon. Yeah, that, that was the one trip. It made it all the way. It made it all the way down there. It made it all the way back. Yeah, 100% success rate right there. <laughs> it never let us down. It We made it to every single bull riding we went to in, in the original roadie wagon. Just getting home was the problem. Yeah, we didn't make it back home, but we made it to every single one of them. That's still one of the wildest trips I think we've ever made. Hey, no joke. And we've done some wild ones. That one time we the brake line went out in Arizona. We drove from Arizona all the way to Missouri without brakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was wild too. I mean, the good thing we didn't know as much as we know now, because if we were new what we know now, it would have been a whole lot more scarier. You know, anytime you start like you're getting ready to make a decision, you think what would Quentin or Dakota do if that's the first, if that's the decision, if that if you're basing your decision off of what Quentin Vaught and Dakota Eagleburger would do, probably not the best decision is going to be no. made. <laughs> no, not at all. The crazy thing was both of them was with us when the van broke down. Yeah, they were. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no joke. Dakota was a mechanic. He got, yeah. a, you know. Really, he should be thanking us because he got to work on his mechanic skills that weekend. And he also almost got his eyes burned out. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, it is true. I thought he was blind. Me I too. Thought I thought blind. that happened. <laughs> like, well, I don't know what like line he broke or whatever. I'm not a mechanic, but whatever that was that squirted in his face, like it yeah. was everywhere. Yeah. He had freaking scars on his arms, I think, from it. Yeah. Yeah, that well, but I mean, he was one of the toughest ones, so good thing it happened to him and not anybody else. Yeah, else. no joke. <laughs> yeah, no joke. And that wasn't uh, even the end of it. That no, was, that was why we were still breaking down on the side of the road, it was still overheating because yeah. then, yeah. uh, he also had to be the one to freaking uh take the drive shaft off. Yeah, and, that we, yeah, and then he. <laughs> Tied it up to the top of it. That was wild. I'll never forget Ethan calling me, my brother-in-law calling me a couple days after I dropped it off when he had a chance to look at it. And he's like, where's the drive shaft at? So I called Dakota and he's like, it should be underneath. I just tied it up. And I guess it's not, a, it, you know, it wasn't attached to the other side. It's like a little sleeve it fits in. And so it's somewhere in the mountains of West Virginia. Yeah, somewhere on the side of the road. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, That's, that was yeah. that was hopefully that never. <laughs> that was that, a heck of a trip. That's when yeah, we were, decided to get a new van. <laughs> yeah, it was like, man, we're gonna save so much more, so much money. It's gonna be like five, like one day event. Like literally, it's gonna be the most it's least expensive trip of all time, and it ended up becoming the most expensive trip ever. Yeah. And the longest. <laughs> For people that don't realize, get really get it, like we're traveling at that point, going every single weekend. Up to that point, it had mostly been two day events. So you're looking at every weekend, you're it's at least three days you're gone. So you're looking at every weekend, three days. We're in kind of the heart of, you know, that season. And so you're kind of at the point where, you know, one day event is actually like a, a nice little break. And we oh, go yeah. all the way up there, and, and we have to stay the night. We were gone like three or four days. Yeah, yeah, it was a heck of a trip. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was. Yeah. yeah, that was wild. And then what? What was it that the exhaust fell off on the way there? Yeah, on the way there, we stopped to get some food for lunch, and then we got in the car. Like, man, what's that dragon noise? And we stopped, looked for <laughs> the van, pulled the exhaust out. And I was like, oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I was in Kentucky, so <laughs> moral of the story, 
don't take a van that's been sitting for six years and just decide to just take it across the country through the yeah. you know hills or mountains, whatever you want to call them, West Virginia. Because yeah, if we were going to the to, mountains, weren't we? Yeah, in the mountains. Like, if we was going to Kansas, where it was a little flatter, probably been a little better. But going through those big hills. Yeah, we kept um, saying, hey, if we just make it to the flats, we make yeah. it to the flats, we'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> just make it to the flats. Man, did you watch the PBR last night? I didn't get to last night. Um, I watched a little bit. Uh, there's three way tie for first, like 88. Or I, did, uh, I saw Andrew, uh, Andrew, Kyler Oliver, and yeah. what's his uh, um, it starts that, with a that, D. Last name starts with a D. Yeah, the the Casso or something like that. Yeah, man, I think that he's been in the states for a, for a while. Uh, I think he used to be on a uh, Carolina team, and they traded him or something. I don't know if that's true or not. But he was on the Outlaws at the end of the year, wasn't he? Yeah, so I think he started out like last year, being on uh, Carolina, and then he never got the ride. Then they traded him. And then I don't I don't know maybe he just come from I, I have no idea but I want to say that he was but I don't know not for sure but yeah it's crazy I mean man you look at guys they have success in like the teams and then all of a sudden like bam like people who nobody never heard of or anything it's wild yeah yeah it's crazy and. Even throughout the year, like how much stuff changes, especially now with the teams. Like you look at all the the people that are on the team series, and now it's like even the UTB is like a different thing altogether because there's new faces, and then yeah. you, super high turnover rate as well with how everything's working throughout the season. So like even the UTB season, look at the roster right now, and then you watch how that roster changes throughout the year. Just yeah. throughout this new season, it'll change a ton. From weekend to weekend, it'll be – it's oh, going to yeah. be crazy to see the amount of change that takes place. And then, you know, you're going to see – you see guys that, like with the team stuff, that you didn't see on the UTB or going to velocities. And then you see them on the teams and stuff, and then you'll see some of those guys – that will kind of make the transition over a little bit during the regular season. And some guys you won't see again until maybe the next team series. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you think about how fast uh, the turnaround season is like the turnaround is for the season to start. Like last weekend, those, they, those guys were just in Vegas and then now they're riding in Arizona. Like, man, that's, yeah. that's like, I mean, it's a short, short time. Like you, you don't have much time to kind of, uh, relax a little bit, you know, or anything like that. There's, you're getting on a lot of bulls all the time, and I, and to me, I think that's just wow how how quick turnaround time it is, you know. And they they made some rules this year for that, where guys can I forget is it three events? They sent an email out. There's there's a change in like how many events you can miss and all of that within the UTB event. So. Uh, I know somebody mentioned, I saw on Facebook about Alves, where he was at, and somebody said, you know, he'd probably taken, you know, one of his weeks off or something. So there could yeah. be a few guys that even take a few weeks, you know, off. So a few of these events off during the winter, just because they just came out of the team series. Um, you know, so you, yeah. you may see that. And really, it'll be pretty much the same guys until January. And then January hits, it's going to change a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's a event every weekend in December, which it's a lot of events. You know? Yeah, and I don't know how it works this year with uh, like torn pros and how all that's working. Do yeah. you like it? No, do you... I, I I have no idea. I mean, I hadn't even really looked at the schedule just because it it you know the schedule changes so fast, and then they never have anything in the country as far as this is what's going on. Um, so I haven't really looked at it. You know, usually, I mean, you always have Fort Worth is like the first one. And then after that, you know, you'll have your velocity startup. Yeah. And after Christmas. Yeah, velocity but, will be January. The first one's in Lexington, the 7th and 8th. Yeah. Yeah, so. Are um, you going to go to Fort Worth at all before the new season starts? I don't know. Uh, I might. It just depends. Uh 
I don't know. I might. I haven't really quite hundred percent, hundred percent into it yet. Are you going to NFPB finals? Uh, as of right now, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I, I, did you uh, go to very many last year? Yeah, I went to a few, but I just never bought my card. Uh, gotcha. I, I just never bought it, so it, it was. I was never really worried about it. I don't know. I went to a lot this year for smaller events to where I just didn't buy my, my permit or yeah. whatever. For, uh, I don't know. Having a permit, I feel tied down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Because uh, if I buy my permit, I'm going to go. Right. So, and I just like to go to wherever I, I want to go to and not have to worry about it. I mean, even sometimes I'm like, oh, man, it kind of bites me in the butt because in the winter time, the, the, the finals is about to happen and you know, I could qualify for it. Yeah, hundred percent. But, 100%. Oh, but uh, I, went, I, don't, I don't. I went to the one event and snapped my ankle. I won, but I, <laughs> I so I only ended up winning like I think, I don't know, close to sixteen hundred, fifteen hundred bucks. There you so go. If they, uh, I'm like right there on the alternate list, so I'll go to it. Yeah. If, uh, if they call me, I think I'm second alternate right now. But last year, to, last year I went to just a couple, and then I went to finals. And man, it's an, I I do like how NFPB puts their finals right there in December. It's the eighth and ninth or ninth and tenths, and yeah. it's a good timing because there's not really any PBRs going on, and so it it's a good place to go and and you know fill your pockets a little bit because you're just getting on good bulls. And they they have like ten thousand added or something like that, so. Yeah, it's hard to believe that you didn't make it and you you make sixteen hundred. Usually, if you have at least five hundred, I was number thirty. I was number yeah. thirty, and they take twenty five. So, I'm still right. hoping maybe I'll get it. But oh, you might. We'll you never know. I'm sure you will. Um, and then the eighteenth, I'm gonna go to Carney. Are you planning on going to Carney again? Yeah, I plan on going to Carney. Okay. Uh, you know, I need to be at the first one or the first two, first three, yeah, first five. I can know. ride now pretty much i need to get on to test test my ankle out and see how it's feeling whether i need to you know but a hundred percent i need i'm going to be at lexington and i'm going to be at carney so i'm yeah. kind of deciding which weekend to go to fort worth maybe and and you know just give it a test run just to get on some practice pools but yeah. i'm not going to go up there by myself it's like 11 hours so i know dakota he said he would go with me so i'm not sure whether I'm going to go this next weekend or if I'm going to give it a couple more weeks and then test it out. I'm still kind of feeling out, you know, I, but I'm, it's pretty much healed now. So I think I'm, you know, pretty much ready to go now as far as trying to get back in that flow and, yeah. and get back on. So it's been yeah. a tough, my ankle, this was probably the toughest recovery I've had. It's just kind Is of weird. It, but I think get... a lot of it because of my foot, like it wasn't just my ankle, like it goes into my foot and stuff. So I've been dealing a lot with uh, plantar fasciitis and stuff like that in my foot. So that's going to kind of suck. And, I mean, you're pretty, you're, you're old too. So that probably has a lot to do with it. You know what? It's not the years, it's the miles, Keith. And I've yeah. been, I've got both. I've got both now. I've got years and miles. So, oh, yeah. Well, no. No, well, I'm man. Not- I'm pretty much ready to go, and I've I've been itching. So that's good. That's good. That's good. I've been trying to take a break for a little bit, but I don't know. It's hard to take a break when everything's just starting back up again. Yeah, you know? it's about to go January. If you were going to take a break now, would would be the time. But I've taken a break. I've, yeah. I've taken yeah, yeah, July, July should, till now. So you should be well rested. I'm I'm very well rested. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm ready to go. So. Yeah. It's good. And I even got, uh, like I was telling you, got a new rope coming in. And it's crazy just the wisdom you get in the years. You know, yeah. like, I'm young, it's just like you try out all these different ropes and all that. And I've just got to the point now where it's like, I'm not trying anything new out. Like, you know, like I know what kind of rope I like and what kind of rope fits the way I ride. And I think I'm going to get that kind of rope from now until I retire. Yeah, yeah, man. It's I think after a while that you just kind of figure out what you like, you know, as far as anything, any kind of equipment, spurs, you know, gloves, ropes, you know, it's kind you, of it is. You changed everything with those spurs. Yeah, they're, I, man. There, I mean, 
I've never been one of the people that really think about in detail as far as my equipment wise, you know, what, what I like. To me, I always thought bull ropes are bull ropes, spurs are spurs, just freaking ride your bull, <laughs> you know. And then whenever I got to, I had the same set of spurs from when I started riding bulls to the time I bought the ones that I have now. And that was like eight years of the same exact kind. So never changed. And then all of a sudden I seen these and I was like, man, maybe those will work better. And they did. And they feel way better. I mean, it's like, oh man, I can't believe I rode that long with you. <laughs> with my old ones. It, it was crazy. And I could feel it in my groins like the first few weeks. Like, yeah. cause I had that much better of a hold with my feet. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. Every everybody that I that I uh that had them, you know, they love them. Uh, Dakota Warrington, uh, he loves them. He got he's got some, <clears throat> and, you know. So they're pretty good spurs, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, they are. And I talked to um, uh, Sling and Shanks about it, and he was yeah. saying that a lot of guys are starting to get those ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super yeah, popular. But, yeah, man. Uh, did you? Did, is he still taking like uh, five five pair of PBR rounds for Spurs? I don't know. I bet he would. <laughs> man, that's a lot of... I definitely did that when. Yeah, I man, that's a lot of rounds. I wonder what he does with them. I, I asked him in that podcast. I feel like he was saying that, uh, like he sells a lot of them, but a lot of people ask. So a lot of people, when they buy spurs, they ask for those rails. And yeah. so it's just one of those deals that helps him, you know, it's just a marketing thing. If everybody's oh, okay. asking for rails when they're buying their, your, you know, your spurs, it would make sense that you would try to get more of those rails just to you know, help. Yeah. The customer a bit. But he's doing, uh, you know what? I, I don't think there's anybody else that's doing anywhere close to what he's doing with spurs. Yeah, no, not at all. You know, I mean, it, he's I, everybody that I see. I mean, they buy spurs from. Uh, man, they all look good quality. I my set that I have, I have them for about three to four years. They don't bend. Yeah, and they. I mean, going through mud, knee deep mud, it don't matter. Just wash them right off. Everything. Basically, if you get a new set, it's just because you just want to get a new set. <laughs> yeah. You get a new set because you didn't like you didn't like something about them, or it's not because they were damaged. I can see yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, you know? no, they're freaking, they're tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, man, I'm I'm really looking forward to this season. Yeah, it's good. It, I mean, it's kind of an interesting deal getting a feel for a shortened season because it's a different deal altogether. Yeah, and especially yeah. like you go through like how many weekends to take off and and all of that, and it's just a different deal when it's shortened because there's there's enough time, you know. But like after the season's over, if you need to, but like during the season, there's only so much time because May yeah. it goes it comes quick. Yeah, yeah. Every bull matters. Every single one. Every single one. I'm just excited this year because last year I felt like I started the season off. I learned so much about halfway through the season, you know, it with my own writing. Um, I'm yeah. really excited to be able to start that off, you know, which I did. I was fairly consistent, but at the beginning of the year, I really struggled into my hand. And it was just some learning, the skill development that I needed to work on into my hand that I finally figured out to the end. And then... Yeah. Then it was just, you know, it didn't matter whatsoever. Like, I, I feel really confident now moving forward in my career, like, left or right, doesn't matter. Yeah. Which has always been weird for me because most guys struggle. If they're going to struggle, they struggle away from their hand. And I've been the exact opposite, you know. Yeah. Like, my weakness has never been away from my hand. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. always, you know, into my hand when it was there. and. Yeah. And which is strange because in your hand you have to make more movements, you know. Uh, yeah. As as, but I don't know. It's, I think. It's, I think there's. I think into your hand, there's just a little bit more forgiveness as far as you can kind of, you know, get to kind of you can kind of get stretched out a little bit and kind of backdoor them, and you can really, you know, kind of get to where you're just diving off in there, where the way from yeah. your hand, man. If you go too far in there, 
that's maybe the toughest move in all of bull riding is getting the well away from your hand. And then once you get out, you can't backdoor a bull. Not really. You, JB did it as good as you probably can, but it's really difficult to backdoor one away from your hand. Yeah. You really yeah. have to do it with your hips more than anything. Yeah. Away from your hand, away from your hand. There, you start getting well. You have to have perfect timing, and you got to move. You got to move the exact amount you need to move. You move too far, you're never going to get back over in there unless the bull widens out a little bit or something. But uh, if you don't move enough, I think one thing that kind of like get guys is when they see that bull's head coming back to them and they're away from your hand, they're in there. That will scare the crap out of you. Either you're going to close your eyes and try to get out of there or you go going to be calm and just kind of make the right moves, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cause I mean, when one's and it, a lot of it depends, but those ones that are hesitating, that's the worst. You get welled on a bull that's kind of hesitating going away. And that's, that's worse because if you do try to like, you know, once you get in there, if you're trying to go to the front to get back out over there, like, man, if they hesitate one time, now you slide off in there and they're coming, you're right on their head. Like, and your hands like somebody, are good because there's no pressure on it. Yeah. And like the main ones that like want you in there, they know you in there and they're just throwing the <laughs> it gets it gets real quick. <laughs> yeah, it does. I wonder what it's like yeah. for the bullfighters in those situations. You know? Yeah. yeah they know, see but... it. They see it as much as we do. They're like, man, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and their timing's probably really crucial too because you know as that bull's moving and spinning like which guy is going to actually go in there changes depending on where that you know every single round yeah. that was taken yeah, so, who's gonna grab, yeah yeah who's gonna grab his head who's gonna because at that point once you get in there you're pretty much getting hung up like yeah. you know unless you unless you check out and sometimes the right answer is to instead of going trying to go back to the front and kind of get out of there to actually go back and try to throw yourself almost like an end your hand, throw yourself, you know. And which which can be hard because like everything's telling you to stay forward. Yeah, hundred like, percent. Like stay forward, like your body's saying, stay forward, do not get back. You know, that, I, I think is, a lot of it depends on too how far you really are in there. Yeah. I think yeah, that and how the bull is moving. <laughs> True, yeah. If a bull's if a bull's moving really quick, it's really not even about you know. It's really not. It's more about holding, like holding your position and allowing them to come back underneath you. Where it gets tricky is when they're not like really spinning under. You know, when they're moving yeah. forwards or whether they're hesitating and if they're boxy, that's where it gets really difficult because yeah. then it's like they 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 come in, but then that next round they're not so it's you know kind of the timing is much more difficult um yeah. if they're just if they're just spinning you you know as long as you're not way off in there you can kind of hold what's up everybody i'm thrilled to announce a fantastic partnership between the rodeo wagon podcast and rodeo life official rodeo life isn't just a coffee brand it's a veteran-owned business that epitomizes the principles of hard work dedication and perseverance in all their products as an avid consumer of Rodeo Life Coffee, I am proud to align myself with a company that mirrors my values and resonates with our audience. Supporting this veteran-owned business is not only a testament to our shared ethos, but also a way to give back to those who have served our country. This partnership promises exciting content, collaborations, and surprises for all our listeners and the rodeo community. You can anticipate special episodes featuring the Rodeo Life experts and even a chance to win some Rodeo Life merchandise. We look forward to this journey with Rodeo Life and the enriching experience it will bring our audience. Join us as we venture into this partnership fueled by a passion for rodeo and a great cup of Rodeo Life coffee. Stay tuned for more exciting updates and the amazing things to come from the Rodeo Wagon Podcast and Rodeo Life Official. Make sure you go to rodeolifeofficial.com and check out all their sweet merch. Are you searching for that perfect statement? Look no further than Bluegrass Engraving, where creativity meets craftsmanship. Their specialty lies in creating custom buckles and dip cans, but that's not all. They redefine elegance with an exquisite line of jewelry. And for those who appreciate a little flair, check out their engraved guns collection. At Bluegrass Engraving, they don't just create products, they craft experiences. 
Visit Bluegrass Engraving today and let them turn your visions into engraved realities. Bluegrass Engraving, where artistry meets authenticity. Hey there, folks. I want to tell you about my favorite cowboy hat brand, Sombrero Brands. As a professional bull rider, I know how important it is to have a hat that not only looks good, but can withstand the toughest rides out there. And that's exactly what Sombrero Brands delivers. Their hats are custom fitted and shaped to perfection, with a level of attention to detail that's hard to find these days. But what really sets Sombrero Brands apart is the fact that they're a family owned and operated business. Mark and Kendall Holler, the owners, and their daughter Sarah, who's only 13 but already a hat making prodigy, are all passionate about their craft. They know what it takes to make a cowboy hat that can stand up to anything the rodeo circuit can throw at it. And get this. The founder's grandfather, Polly Holler, was born and raised at South Camp on the Four Sixes Ranch. These folks have got cowboy blood running through their veins, and it shows in every hat they make. That's why I'm proud to have Sombrero Brands as a major sponsor for my podcast, the Rodeo Wagon Podcast. So if you're in the market for a hat that's tough enough to handle anything the rodeo throws at it, give Sombrero Brands a try. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Yeah. You know. Yeah, man, it's it's wild, you know. And then you see some guys that you know. So there are two ways to check out. You can either, you know, throw yourself back, right? And then if you don't, like, get enough whip to really get yourself back, you know, behind, then you can just pretty much jump off on the inside. The other uh, which way. Is- <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. The other way is, and I don't know if it's less you know less scary but the other way is to freaking like grab hold on the other side of their neck and try to scratch and claw (laughs) yeah that's i know sometimes like i'll get off on the inside and it's because i'm stuck to the inside and i cannot get back over and then (laughs) if i grab and you try to time it i close my eyes i'm like oh i'm like hit the ground like oh man he didn't touch me (laughs) yeah you know perfect (laughs) but But, it is the hardest one thing too is like you really don't want to check out because you never know when that bull is you're going to get so far off in there he's going to change directions and then then there's there's a lot more you know chance there but when they're real mean and they know they got you in there that's a different boat yeah man yeah that's why like whenever you're riding one and he's so mean he's trying to hook your chaps you probably don't <laughs> Be on there. <laughs> I remember going to Newtown, North Dakota, and I got on one of Nevada Burgers bulls, and that bull came out, spun one time, and then started chasing the bullfighters around. That's sketchy. Oh. And then I rode him the whistle blue, and you don't know like how to get off. G- getting on a bull that's just chasing people, like he's so mean, he's not bucking anymore. That's <laughs> when it gets sketchy. <laughs> Because your hand's in there enough to where when they're not bucking, it's hard to get that sucker ripped out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that ain't no joke. Man, do you prefer getting off into your hand or getting off away from your hand? So it depends on what rope I'm using. When wow. I was using an American rope, it was really easy to get off bulls um, into my hand. Yeah. So if I got off into my hand, it's stupid easy. I could step off. My hand would just come out. And I feel like it's almost the opposite with the Brazilian rope. I feel like my hand pops getting off away from my hand. So, yeah. like, if one's going into my hand, it's really easy to get off away from my hand and then allow it to pop. And I know, like, the old school way is you always get off into your hand. Ride them until they, you know, allow you to get off into your hand. But I think yeah. that was because of the ropes a lot as far as a lot of guys were using American ropes. And... For me, anyway, with the Brazilian rope, it changes things. Mostly, could probably because of the pressure on your hand, um, and how that's how that pressure works. And you know, obviously, getting off, it's about getting that pressure on your hand to where it pops, or pulling yeah. your tail. But still, there's still pressure on your ta- hand once you pulled that first wrap. What about yeah. you? I don't know. Uh, I, most of the time, I find myself getting off away from my hand. Uh, I don't know. It's just easy that way. I don't know why. But it just feels like everything in my body wants to go right. <laughs> you use why. American too. Yeah, and I use an American too. So it'd be getting off into my hand would be best. Getting off front and left. 
but I don't know. I just I don't get hung up much, and I don't know. I I try to keep good bull ropes, <laughs> not yeah. something that wore out that's gonna hang me up every time. Yeah, you know that's one thing I've never really had a whole lot of issues with of getting hung up. I think maybe it's because I'm a taller guy, so I'm taller yeah. and lankier. Uh, I don't get hung up a whole lot. It, but I also another issue that I have is like my legs are long, so uh, getting off and stuff. I don't like I don't get thrown away quite like you guys do. Like you talked about pulling the rip cord. Like, yeah. My tendency can be sometimes I'll try to get off bulls and I'll try to step off. My I've stepped off where I have pictures of my hand in the bull rope while my feet are on the ground, like one foot on the ground with my hand in my bull rope. And that's sketchy because like, that can turn out real bad. But so, like there's not too many times where I just get like, you know, pull the rip cord and go flying and look, their hips really throw me out a ton. Yeah. Yeah. No, man. Every time I get on one, he, he cannot be bucking that hard. He's going to fling me. He's going to fling me pretty far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's probably why I like to on the right side because I can, I don't know, just. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, just a little bit, and he's gonna fling me. Yeah, know? I think too, like, cause you're left-handed, so on the right side, there's a little bit of that tension as far as getting on the getting on their hips, but still having that kind of security with your hand to where it, it like puts the right amount of pressure. Where I feel like going away from your hand, it's almost like you you have to almost open up and get exposed. Yeah. So, like when you go out like that, it's like there's it's I don't know. Yeah, I think I don't know. It's, it's a little bit more. The feel yeah, it's, is different. Yeah, it's hard to describe, you know. So, so, like much of, so much of it is feel, and that's yeah. what's crazy. And, and the farther into my career I've gotten, the more, like, there's foundational stuff, don't get me wrong, and it's really important to get those fundamentals correct. But if, the, if you have all the fundamentals in the world and you do all the drills, but you don't develop the, f the feel of what those tr drills really feel like, in practice yeah. you know, you'll never really reach a you know very high level like so much of its feel right. and yeah. there's sometimes i do stuff where it's like it's uh andrew alvidra calls them bull moves <laughs> mm -hmm. where it's like you make a move that's like it's completely off of feel like you just made a bull move it, you reacted to where you were at and you made the right move to get back underneath them and it, yeah. you don't really drill for those, per se. You can't. Yeah, right. You look at some guys' mechanics, and they're terrible. But they're yeah. good riders. Yeah. <laughs> like <they're... laughs> they have like the just... feels. Yeah. yeah like, I, you should... In golf, it's the same way. In golf, you have guys that are, like, field players, and then you have guys that are, you know, very mechanical. Like, they know exactly what's going on. Really, the best generally are good at both. But um, you have some guys – in probably every sport that are just they just have the feel <laughs> they have yeah. the feel yeah, like, uh, I, don't, I don't know it's hard to hard to hard to pinpoint it I guess you know but yeah it's like some people I was like man do not learn anything from this person they ride the bulls <laughs> but do not <laughs> yeah do not listen yeah that's funny I was uh me and Malin, um, I was helping him out, and we were talking to uh, a couple. There's a couple um, Amish boys, ex Amish boys, that are learning to ride, and yeah. we were talking about, you know, a time to st st uh, stare down that barrel and when not to. <laughs> and like, on that barrel, and sometimes you have to grab a hold of it. Put it in your yeah, mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep, yep. We were talking about that, and uh, he <laughs> was he was doing um, oh framing a house and uh and he, he was up there doing doing all of that and uh and <laughs> so <laughs> there's a time where it's like look everything around you like it's got to go you got you got one thing on your mind and you have to be fully committed to it no matter <laughs> yeah. what like yeah. you know well, yeah well, yeah there's some bullets there's and some I, 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 situations too. <laughs> I think a lot of that is like whenever you get there, your mindset that you're in, because like you can be there and and not and not be fully committed. And, you know, sometimes sometimes you show up to to an event and 
you can tell, like, you can see it in the guys riding, you know, on even some top riders in the world, you know, like far as where they show up that day, you know, where they're mining. Because yeah. you see them on bulls that buck hard. It's like when you get on one that's actually bucking, really, like you're screaming hard, you know, and you took hit hard hits before, it's like your body remembers, like, how, how that felt right before it happens. Yeah. And then, possibly, like, you might have was looking at him, you, you was – you seen that barrel coming and him aiming that barrel, you know, but and you kind of shy away from it. But someday if you show up and you're just ready, like nothing can uh, distract you from what's from what you're here to do. You know, I think that's crazy. Like for bull riding wise, you know, I guess it's pretty much there with any kind of uh, any kind of sport. You know, like you think about boxing, like when you go there, you go to box. Like if you're one of the best boxers in the world and you're fighting somebody and you, th- this is pretty much scheduled as a kind of practice fight for you, but you get ready to fight them and you keep knocking them down. They keep standing back up. It does something to you mentally. Like, man, why is this guy not giving up yet? You know? And that goes back to when you're riding bulls, you know, he's sitting there coming back up in your face with his big horns, jump after jump. And you're just sitting there. You barely get to the front end. And one time you just missed it. And you know, you missed it. You know, you know what's about to happen. And so it's a, it's a matter of if you're going to take that hit or if you're going to keep going, you know, Daylin last night, they only marked him 82 and a half, which or 82 and a quarter, which I thought was really low. But this bull, like, kind of come out around right left, start back in front of himself and, like, whip Daylin down on his head and Daylin sat back up and rode him. Yeah. And, so, and I was like, wow, like, man, that's, that's a gritty bull ride. And it's just him just knowing, like, all right, he just takes the hit and keep moving, you know. Why it's happening, you don't know. It's – your body can't really tell what's happening, but you, you know, like, don't quit, you know, keep yeah. moving. Keep, I mean, so I think I, that and bull riding, I think it just sets I, it apart. There's a misconception too, within a lot of people, especially guys that retire guys that get, get away from the sport. And then all they think about is back in the day and how tough they were. Like, it's such a mental part. Everybody at a high level, like, no matter who it is, every world champion has days where they don't show up. Yeah. You know, and you can talk like this doesn't happen. It happens in every single sport at every single level. There's days where guys don't show up. And it's no. not really, a, it, it, this is the misconception that that's, you know, a knock on the riders. Hey, you guys didn't show up. You know, that's a knock on the athlete. It's really not. It's a testament to how much of a mental sport this is. And, the reality behind performing at a high level under such circumstances, yeah. you know, um, I think one thing, cause what, what you're trying to do is recreate it to where you can actually come in with that mentality more times and the best in the world show up more than uh, the other guys, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. And I think yeah. one, one thing I've learned is over the years is who you go with matters, you know, yeah. like there's, there's guys that when we get in the car, we win, you know, you look at me, you, Zane Cook, Dakota Eagleburger, you know, Quentin, uh, Casey. Like, we have a group that when we're going to freaking bull rides, we're winning. It's oh. just almost every single I – don't, I don't know if there was one weekend last year where all of us fell off. Yeah, no, I don't think it was. We were, we were winning. We were placing. We were winning rounds. And just those people, and I'll tell you right now, you go with Dakota Eagleburger, you show up. Yeah. <laughs> now, you yeah. may show up like 10 minutes before the bull riding start, but <laughs> you also show up because, you know, that's just Dakota. And, you know, you get around guys like that, and it's just that it's that cowboy tough, you know, I don't care, you know, yeah. mentality. Yeah, and it, it total, it total uh, rubs off on other guys, that's for sure. You know, if you have, if you're going with guys, you're like, man, I hate this bull. They're going down the list and they're talking about every single bulls they don't like. Yeah. Me, I don't, bulls, I have no idea what bull I got when I get there. Like, I, I don't know anything about them. Uh, and then, you know, with some guys, they keep up every single bull and they start going down the list. Like, nope, I don't want that one. I don't want that one. I don't want that one. I was like, dang, which one do you, which one do you want? <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, it's, I guess it's just different. So, I'm, but man, I can get on the same bull like four times. I will not remember. Like, I have no idea what he does. You know, you there's know only what, one bull that I do. Remember. What's and that? that's the bull. 
of David Berry's painted black, black and white paint. Was that the one that knocked you out in? Yeah, in Ohio. In Ohio, yeah. okay. I didn't know that was David's. That was David Berry's bull. Yep, David Berry's. No joke. Paint. He yep. probably did. They cut his head off yet? I don't know. I hope so. Last time, last <laughs> I seen, he was a bull team. <laughs> no joke. Yeah, man, so, I mean, bull freaking took some guys' heads off. That was yeah. the bull that you had to stare stare down that barrel, and yeah. the majority of the time, but not a bull you were going to be a lot on. You'd ride and be like eighty four and a half. Yeah, maybe if that, if that, that's, you weren't gonna be very many. But that's I seen him knock out guys. He didn't even turn back. <laughs> <laughs> like man, why do you like this bull so much? I hate him. <laughs> It's one thing if you get on a bull that you're going to be 88, you're going to win the round on. Like, okay, now we're talking like that. Um, What's that black bull that was going last year? He, They still take him, I think. Sin City? Yeah, Sin City. Yeah. yeah. Sin City, mean. He's really not counterfeit. He would counterfeit at Velocity Finals with, uh, with yeah. David. Kind of a, yeah, was... he still bucked, but it was in kind of a counterfeit trip. Um, yeah. Most of the time, he's just a sweet sucker around to the right, back around to the left if you're riding him. Uh, yeah. But you'll at least, you know, get a good score on him. Um, oh, yeah. You're going you're gonna to place top five. Yeah. You know, which which is pretty good. But you know, and... he was actually pretty good most of the year. Uh, there were yeah. a few, few outs where he was not really, he's kind of counterfeit before he came around anyway. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, last time I sent, last time I seen him a few weeks ago, he wasn't even that mean. Like he's just normal bull. Probably like twenty years old. I don't know how old he is, but he's been around a minute. Yeah, he has. I remember getting on him like four years ago. It was a while ago. I will say this: you go to those PBRs, and it doesn't really matter what you're getting on. Them bullfighters are so freaking good. Yeah, like, so yeah. good. Yeah, that's one good thing about PBR. I mean, they're gonna have good bullfighters. You know, like uh, as far as uh, I guess the the challengers or the torn pro ones or whatever, I don't really know. But most of them will. But if it's like a PBR putting it on, oh, they're gonna have good guys. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I never worry about how mean one is. Like I never think about. It. Like I think about it. Like just tell me he's mean, and I'll make sure. Like I'm getting up. I'm not gonna be. Yeah, which, right. <laughs> which which I never am. But sometimes like. Run toward the fence and then you jog it. <laughs> you yeah, the yeah, way. right. And uh, and so, uh, you know that's that's good to know that. But I'm not just going to lay there. <laughs> yeah, right. You know. Yeah, heck, even like standing around. Like if you have one that's mean, um, it's probably good just to honestly get up, get out of the arena. You know, get over yeah. all the shoots, get out. Not not because he's going to hook you, but more for the sake of the bullfighters and getting him out, you know? Some of them bulls are so mean, like, they'll stay out in the arena for a long time, and if you're just lollygagging, hanging out on the side of the fence, you know, <laughs> like, you're not doing anybody, you know, any good because that bull could come over there and it's just a waste of time, whereas if you can get out, then the bullfighters have a better opportunity to be able to get that bull yeah. to leave for the production's sake, really. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but then bullfighters awesome. love it. That Sin City, they man, they'll go out there and they'll fight that sucker. <laughs> Any way I could, man, I cannot be a bullfighter. <laughs> Not for me. Just... I tried it once. I ran a straight. I hit the gap perfect. Ran a straight line. He picked me up, threw me over the fence, and I'm like, you know, I just don't <laughs> for me. <laughs> I don't like this deal. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. But yeah, those guys, they're freaking good. Like, really good. Yeah. Yeah. And especially like now, what probably my favorite thing to watch is they do that team bullfighting at Fort Worth. That is fun. That's yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Luke Coffin is, is uh, like over that deal or whatever. But man, he they do a really good job down there to, to pretty much to have people who never, who don't know anything about rodeo. As far as, as a really big tourism pound, and those guys come in there and then they'll set up like different little because you can only fight bulls the same way so many times before it yeah. start, kind of starts recording. But let's do other stuff, you know, like soccer and you know, different games and stuff with, with bulls out there. It's pretty cool, yeah, yeah. And then Mexican fighting bulls, 
Yeah. <laughs> Spice bulls, that's a different different deal. Yeah. yeah. They're freaking mean. <laughs> yeah, they're real mean. Like sometimes you'll get on one and he's like a fighting bull. And he's like, Man, you got a duck in the circle? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, man, I'm glad I'm not that guy. Most yeah. time they're not that mean. <laughs> yeah. You know what's crazy? They do the Fort Worth every every Thursday. But they don't really have a whole lot of like big PBRs there. No. No, no. I haven't been there in a while. I guess since the draft deal, whatever. Yeah, that was the last time I went. Of course I didn't get I got hurt not too long after that. It was like four weeks after that. Yeah. Man, I think it's crazy how uh that draft deal whatever on how it was all set up. Man. Again, <laughs> that's it's a, like, uh, yeah. That's a it's gonna be interesting how all of this works, especially this next year with two additional teams. Like how's that even work for drafting? Yeah. Like I don't I'm not sure. Like yeah. whenever you add teams, like what does that look like? Because think about it. Think about it this way. So you have two teams that are coming in. Now, a lot of, you know, you, you'd say that a lot of your top guys are already picked up. They already have contracts. So what is what riders do these two teams have left outside of maybe some guys that are turning 18? Like, what do they have to pick from? You know, like, how does that work? I don't, I think, I, don't... I, think, I think they got a lot of guys to pick from. Well, they, man, if, they have a lot if... of guys to pick from. However, there's a lot of guys they don't have to pick from. I, I guess that w- that's my question is like, is, is there, how, how does that work? Like, like, I, how do you make it, sure that like when the draft happens, because think about it this way. Also, when you have the draft, all these teams get a choice to draft, but do, are the two teams going to get more draft picks to start? So they're, they get a pick first, you know, cause they have more people they got to fill. They should, maybe get the first pick of free agency and the first pick of drafts. But I don't know. I, I'm sure that there's a standard like to go yeah. by based on other sports, but I don't, I don't know that. Man, I think, I think uh, the new teams, they'll be filled with more free agents than anything. And um, it, like you, you take a team like the Texas Rattlers. They didn't have not one world champion on their team and they won. They did. And, they did to start the year, but yeah. <laughs> Didn't ride. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't ride. And and man, to me that I think that means that, you know, if you pick guys who are average, who well, who are good enough to ride their bulls that they're picking. Because they're picking their bulls. A hundred percent. Yeah. If you're, if you're picking your bulls, if you can have the right matchups. Well, it, it's know? a testament too to the fact that going out there and just picking up all of these, you know, what what the industry labels superstars is not yeah. Good guarantee. How many how many world titles do the Carolina Cowboys have? Zero. I, I they've, never, they've never won a title in two years. They, and yeah, they, and they had the guys. Had yeah, they had the guys who who have won multiple. Yeah, I mean that 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 team was stacked. Like you look at that team, like that team's gonna win before the season even started. Mm-hmm. And you know, you think about the team that keeps coming in almost second every year is. Uh, is the gamblers and they only got one world champion. I mean, he can't carry the whole team, so apparently they're doing something right, you know, right. for to a certain extent, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I think, wow, you know, like you, so, you just it, like you picking up like if you know the Bulls and you can match the Bulls up with the Riders, then you know I feel like you'll win. I think it's a testament too to the fact that there's a lot of bull riders out there that can ride uh, the Bulls that they should ride. There's yeah. a lot of bulls that can ride the bull they should ride. And we're talking really good bulls, too. But you match guys up with the right bulls, and, and there's a lot of guys out there that can make really, really good bull rides. And yeah. it's not just world champions. It, I think they're the difference, too, in the team. Well, there there definitely is. And the team format versus regular season format. And the regular season format is a completely different deal because outside of the – UTB championship round, it's a draw. Nobody's picking nothing. And, yeah. you know, the team, like you said, you're getting matched up. And you match the right guys up, and th- that that changes things. So yeah. now you're looking at a team, you know, like the Rattlers, who can go out and and you, you find the guys that can freaking, you know, ride those bulls. And 
Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, if, if a guy can only ride bulls that go left, it don't matter if this bull's doing backflips. As long as he's going left, he's going to ride him. But he Joel. can't ride nothing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Joel's gotten, hey, I got to say, Joel has gotten so much better away from his hand. He, yeah. like the last few years, he has really developed away from his hand. But just historically, into Joel's hand, and he's going to, he's going to win. Yeah. Veer, Joel yeah. Veer. I mean, I think that's that's like during regular season, you don't have that luxury. You know, you you might get lucky and you might draw. Literally, it's the opposite. If you're struggling, man, it's like you dr- <laughs> if you if you're struggling one direction, it seems like they're always freaking. You're yeah. drawing them going that direction. <laughs> you're always getting on one that's going that yeah. way, no matter where it is. And yeah. but the team deals, I think that's what separates it. I mean, it's uh, that's how you can see. Like those guys, you know, like I think too, it helps on the the mental aspect, and I think that's something that not talked about enough. So when you have, you know, coaches or whatever that are matching you with bulls, there, what's happening is you're actually helping guys' uh, confidence, and so now they're very confident. I can ride this bull. This bull was picked to fit me, so now they're the mentality. This bull fits me, right? And you should yeah. have that mentality all the time. Like this bull fits me, and if you even if you don't, I'm gonna ride this bull. But still, the the fact that a bull was picked to fit you does a lot for a lot of guys in confidence. Yeah, even yeah, if people say it doesn't. It's still there's th- certain things in psychology that are just it's just how it works, and it's not yeah. something you can force. You can have the mentality I can ride anything, and. You can also have the the truth in the psychology of it, where there's certain times where there's just that confidence that's there. You know, yeah. it's not yeah. a forced. It's very much you know uh, an, an affirmed confidence, especially like if you have coaches. Now, I don't know. I know Andrew, um, and I don't know how all of it functions as far as every rider and if the coaches are you know, talking to writers or what that process is like. Cause I know one, the first year anyway, talking to Andrew Alvedras and he was saying, he told him like, look, you put me on whatever. Like, I don't, don't, you know, you don't need to pick a bull to fit me. I will get on what everybody else doesn't want to get on. That's the one I want to get on. So, you know, I don't know how often that really happens. I think in the future, you're still going to have some of that. Like, look, probably going to be times where you there's a bull in the pin you know of the four four bulls that you have where there's one mm-hmm. bull like okay this bull's not really going to fit anybody necessarily so you're going to have a guy that's like we're going to go to this guy for that kind of bull yeah. but um i think <laughs> for the most part probably the team deals are pretty consistent as far as bulls that are going to fit guys yeah 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 i mean you know, it's, man, it's, I think it's just crazy. You know, it's, it's good that it's working out, I guess. You know, but uh, it changes the dynamics of the sport a lot. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. This reg, the regular season is a whole different world. I'm excited. Yeah. Last year, we did from January to finals, there's 50,000 miles. That's how many yeah. miles that we drove. <laughs> It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. So I'm gonna keep track of it this year. But um yeah, we did fifty thousand. So oh. that's where having the wagon and being able to lay down a bed back here and you know, that's really nice on the road. You know, you have some long yeah. trips and you know, a guy can you know, a couple guys can sleep while you're driving. That's handy. Yeah. Instead yeah. of instead of what we did last year at the beginning, because if you remember last year we did Lexington, and then we went to Denver, and then we went to North Charleston or something like that. And we were in a little car that was so jam packed that, like the, yeah. the the trunk barely fit, and the two guys in the back seat couldn't even see each other because there was just like a wall of you know freaking suitcases and all of that in the car in between them. Yeah, yeah, good, good times, but. Man, uh, we'll do this some more uh, throughout the year. We'll think of some stuff to do, and heck, we'll do it while we're driving down the road. But I've been wanting to have you on again. It's been a minute. I've been laid up, and I know you've been kind of busy. So, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, a lot it's going about on. To, it's crazy how things change, like when you're going hard. And I was talking to um, some guys the other day, you know, they were just getting started. And, you know, there's times in the year where it's like you have a group that you go with all the time. But then throughout the year, there's guys that will get hurt. And so, you know, you see that change. And one of my favorite parts about like the new season is a lot of times you get that group back. Everybody's healthy and it's just a lot of fun, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. And like going, like looking back, like uh, just in rodeo in general, from how far, like how many, how much can change from the way you ride, the way you think about the sport, uh, the way you envision things to go, like the being able to adapt to different circumstances, you know, and the, navigate through 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 sport of rodeo I think is is just crazy, you know. Like uh like one of our one of our buddies, Casey, Casey Culture, always like people always say that yeah, you can drop him off in California with him twenty bucks and he'll be at the bull riding next weekend <laughs> and on the east coast somewhere. You know. So <laughs> having to negotiate have to navigate, you know, through uh the rodeo world, man, that's I think it's I think it's pretty crazy on how it all works. Yeah, it is. Yeah, no, it is, and and getting to do that with guys too. Yeah. yeah. Throughout the year, how much you communicate with people, and you know, all of that change and get travel plans, and weekend to weekend, like all of a sudden, you know, you'll be going. All of a sudden, you'll have a bunch of guys. Some weekends it'll just be like a couple guys, and, and then you'll have a you'll just have a. Uh, a loner that jumps in from time to time. <laughs> Cody Casper jumping in with us when we go up to you know in the original rodeo wagon. Yeah, yeah. I'm never doing that ever again. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, man, you guys are wild, bro. You guys are crazy, man. And you guys don't nothing. You guys are wild on my shit, bro. Live on the edge, man. Or change. <laughs> <laughs> It breaks what you need that man. <laughs> yeah, the, when you're overheating going into the mountains, generally that's a sign. But you know we're just like, nah, it'll be all right. And we'll just stop on side of the road somewhere. We'll just, cool yeah, yeah, every thirty minutes, you know, <laughs> it'll just yeah. take us a little longer to get there. That's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's wild. All right. Yeah. Well, all right, buddy. Man, thanks guys for tuning in. Uh, keep up to date we're about to hit the road so these zoom podcasts are gonna become a little bit less we're still gonna have some so that we can you know you know get some cool people on here but uh here pretty soon we're gonna be hitting the road we're gonna be going pretty hard and we had to go to some really cool places and i look forward to kind of going you know going to all these places and inviting everybody to go with us because uh, lexington that's a really cool one i'm sure we'll do some podcast at these big racing facilities, Keith, we got to go to uh, last year. We went to Lexington, kind of got a tour of some of these different horse farms and, and stuff like that. Really cool. So um, this year we'll make sure that you guys get to be a part of that. Get a little taste of what we do throughout the year. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. So just grateful for everybody that tunes in and listens and look forward to um, continuing this process. And thanks for tuning in guys. See you later. Yeah.